Hello and welcome to the Greek Uculus. I'm the Monk and today we are in Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlords. Within this video we attempt to tackle the tricky subject of towns and town management, going over the different features within the town and the different steps that you want to take in order to make sure you keep your towns. And of course, if that's the kind of video that you want to see, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. We currently have 85% of all uh, Bannerlord uh, viewers not subscribed to the channel, and I cannot tell you how much it helps us out if you hit that subscribe button. Anyway, enough of all of that. Let's jump into this video. Now, like I said, this is a big subject. There's a lot of things we could go over. I'm going to try and keep it as short as possible. And as ever, if I don't explain anything enough for anyone, do me a favor, let me know down in the comments and I will try and help you out. Now, first of all, we really need to talk about loyalty. Loyalty is the single most important stat when it comes to any town that you own. Most expected would be the expected change to loyalty. You really want that to be in the plus. And if there is in the negative, if you are losing loyalty per day, it's something you need to rectify. If you have a low loyalty, then that means your town is likely to revolt. And that's when you get the rebels. It's also a really easy way for you to choose your very first town by attacking a rebelled city. What you want or what you don't want is for your city to be the one rebelling. So a high loyalty is so important. There's a few different factors when it comes to loyalty and the drift either way. Um, governor culture, you can set your own governor. Having a governor the same culture as the city that you own will impact the loyalty um, of that town. Also, your own culture, so you being the ruler, the owner of that town and the culture that you are, if you are the same culture as that town, you will have um, positive influence over that town if you're not the same culture it's going to be negative minus three which is a lot there are also different policies that you can get um which will impact the different um loyalty gain there are some really good policies to actually pick from we're going to go over those in a second also fairgrounds so within your tap your management your town management you can actually set it to fairgrounds basically meaning you're having a party in your town 24 7 that can give you a good um, strong boost to your loyalty security having a high security will also help that as well also relations notable relations um, within the town within the settlements around the town if you have high relations that's also going to give you a positive loyalty score like i said loyalty really is the most important stat so make sure you're paying attention to it Let's take a look at a couple of policies that are key to pick up. Tribunes of the people, town tax paid to the ruler is reduced by 5%. That really isn't a lot, especially if you are well off with money. But town loyalty is increased by one per day. That's a really quick and easy one to pick up. Another good one is forgiveness of debts. Settlement loyalty is increased by two per day. The settlement production, however, is reduced by 5%. Now, the production reduced by 5%, I would rather that we didn't get that, but having the two extra in loyalty per day for just this one policy is massive. And then, of course, we have imperial towns. Towns held by the ruling clan gain one loyalty and one prosperity Per day. Now we'll touch on prosperity later, but having better is definitely good. And towns held by non-ruling clans lose 0.3 loyalty per day. But of course, for you and your towns, you're going to be in the positive, which is what we want. Now let's turn our attention to security. Now having a high security is so important. We've already mentioned that it impacts um impacts your loyalty but it impacts more than just that too now to get a high um, loyalty again you're going to have a number of factors that 
you know, are going to be counting towards this score. None more than your garrison. Having a high garrison and a ton of troops protecting your towns is going to mean you have a high security. As you can see, we have a high um, security. We are maxed out on security and we also are expected change is high as well. Nothing's going to stop us from getting extra security here however you are capped out at 100 so keep that in mind a useful policy to pick up is bailiffs bailiffs gives you town security it's increased by one per day uh, towns with security greater than 60 yield one additional influence influence is absolutely amazing we want more of that however uh, taxes from towns is reduced by five Switching over to magistrates again, town security is increased by one per day and town taxes are reduced by five. Both of these are really good and I would recommend you pick them up. Okay, so prosperity. Now, the more prosperity that we actually have, the better. Having a low prosperity means having a low income. It also means having not enough goods in your store. It means less notable um, NPCs, which also means less troops for you to recruit. So having a high prosperity can only be a good thing for any town. Now, if you have low security or low food, then you're going to be having low prosperity, which is something we absolutely do not want. So get those things sorted if you want to turn around your prosperity. Also, having a high loyalty will again impact this um, number. There's also a few policies that you'll also be able to pick up to boost this as well. It may also surprise you to learn that having a low prosperity, having this number be low, will also impact your workshops. So the greater your prosperity, the better your workshops are going to be doing. Now, one of the things that we can do in order to boost this number is by making sure we have level three aqueducts. Level three aqueducts give you a one bonus to prosperity per day. And of course, once you have got level three aqueducts, I would recommend switching over to housing because housing also gives you the increase of one per day to prosperity. This will stack. Obviously, you're going to need the aqueducts first because that's something you're going to have to build up. Um, whereas housing is something that you can have on all the time. So both of them together will stack, but you want the aqueducts first. The next subject is militia. Now, militia is really important. Militia is the standard random troops that your town will recruit for you. They're not your soldiers. These are guys just, you know, mowing around the markets. They have been picked up and recruited into the local militia. These are lowly, low level troops. However, they do generally make up the bulk of a town's defense, especially until you actually get a high garrison so having a good militia having those stats be positive as in other words they are passively increasing are really important there's certain things that can help with this such as culture um, prosperity being another one and there's also militia grounds that you can actually pop up in a town management now, like every other building, this can be leveled up to level three. I would recommend doing it if you're going to be wanting a high militia um, within your town, meaning you don't necessarily need as big a garrison. And of course, once you have leveled that to level three, you can then go down to daily defaults and just train militia, which will give you a standard three plus um, within your settlement. The next subject is garrison. Now, I'm sure I don't need to go over too much exactly what garrison is. Basically, you can put your own troops in to protect a town. Now, the one thing I would recommend leveling up to level three would be training fields. This increases the experience your garrison troops actually earn passively per day, meaning if you put in level one troops and leave them a you know good amount of time, eventually those level one troops will be leveling up to level five, level six troops. You're going to have decent squads in there. Now you can actually increase your garrison size as well. There's a few different perks and things you can do for that. 
Now, a very important subject is going to be food. If you have a low food, then all your other stats are going to be dropping as well. It's possibly one of the most fundamental things you need to make sure that your town has is food. A great way to subsidize this is just by dumping a load of grain in the shop. Sell it to your town and then your town will use that until they are more stabilized. Generally speaking, you don't need to mess around with food too much as long as you know your um, little villages aren't being raided. You should be having a decent food imply into your um, town. Of course, remembering that your garrison will also affect this. If you have a huge garrison, then it's going to be affecting the amount of food you have. Now, I already mentioned at the beginning of the video that you can have a governor for your town, and that really matters. Depending on who you pick from governor can matter hugely in different things that come out of that. But did you know that every governor actually has different abilities, different perks based on the stats that they actually have? Different people's stats will affect just how well they can lead a town. So take a look at that. Have a little look because like I said, um, there are so many different benefits for having different governors as well as making sure the culture is correct. Have a little look to see what other benefits you have. For instance, if you have a character that has high engineering, then it also means they're probably going to have a um, be good for giving you a high construction level. Now, I'm not going to go over every single building project that you can produce in a game. There's no point. If you read it, it will tell you exactly what it does. However, what I will say is I would prioritize the projects over the daily defaults because the projects are things that you can, you know, tick off um, and be done. Once they're level three, you don't have to do them again. So upgrade your town accordingly based on its own needs. Remember, prioritize loyalty because it's going to be so important and of course different stats do lead to a higher loyalty but just make sure you get that loyalty up the one thing i do think that is worth going over is your reserve and exactly what it is well if you read it it will say that it boosts a project and adds 50 construction um, and costs 500 dinars per day so having a high reserve means you're going to be boosting up your construction now if we go over to construction you can see that it's its own stat that we don't see um, from the other screen and prosperity improves this massively um, having a good governor or having a governor with you know a, a decent engineering stat will also increase this um, market will also adjust that and you've also got your loyalty and your culture which will also impact just how many points you have towards construction but as you can see just your reserves boosting an extra 50 construction per day does actually um, make up a third or more than a third of our overall construction power so having a good reserve is definitely going to help you if you have a ton of projects that you need to be going over. But that about wraps up this video, guys. I think I've spoken about everything enough. If there is a subject that I haven't covered that you would like me to cover um, in a bit more detail, let me know down in the comments. Or failing that, we also have an active and growing Discord. The link for that is down in the description, guys. So you know, if you if you want to jump in a Discord, chat about this game or chat about any game that you happen to be playing, the link's there for you and we welcome one and all. But anyway, I've been a monk, we've been a Christy Cruz, and I will see you in the next video real soon. Until then, take it easy and happy gaming.